Now, heading into this Ravens 49ers game, there was a lot of talk from the media that whichever quarterback's team won this game, then that quarterback would be the new favorite to be the MVP of the league. And when I heard that, I was thinking, ah, yeah, okay. I mean, I get it, but they probably just adding a little extra hype to this game. Uh, they trying to add a little more fuel to the fire. Like, it's two teams, both 11-3, and three, both the top of their conferences, a possible Super Bowl matchup. Yeah, it's all a lot of hype to this game already. So, the whole MVP talk, they just trying to add just a little bit more. But, boy, was I wrong. Because after the Baltimore Ravens and their dominating win over the San Francisco 49ers, Lamar Jackson is now your favorite, the NFL's favorite, to win the MVP. Now, we know he won it back in 2019 after that crazy season. And you got to be very special to win an MVP award once. Imagine how special you got to be to win it twice. Same game clean. We got a lot of exciting news to talk about when it comes to these Baltimore Ravens. But before we get into it, I got to say I appreciate y'all so much. Man, yesterday I was telling y'all we were 90 subscribers away from 71,000. Y'all killed it. Y'all really killed it. Y'all got to 71,000 and got a little bit over it too. So I appreciate y'all like crazy. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Keep running it up. Keep running it up. Let's get to 72,000. Might as well, buddy. Might as well, but I appreciate y'all like crazy for supporting the channel. Keep subscribing. Turn your notifications on. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel. Let's keep on growing together, team. Keep it clean. And thank you so much because y'all killed it with the like button, too. Y'all like the video a lot. I thank you so much. I, I really do. Y'all don't understand how much I appreciate that and how much it helps. So thank you all for doing what y'all be doing. Now, I always say, when I, put when I get put on, I got to put y'all on, too. Heart of the City Clothing. I showed y'all the white hoodie, the Play Like a Raven Ray Lewis hoodie. I showed it to y'all over the past couple days. Now I'm showing you the back in black. So you want to get yours, you go down to the link down below in the description. And you use code ENGRAVEN for not 5, not 10, not 15, but 20% off. So you can get your black Play Like a Raven Ray Lewis hoodie. You can get your white Play Like a Raven Ray Lewis hoodie. You can get both. Now... Somebody who could possibly get both the MVPs in 2019 and in 2023 is none other than Lamar Jackson. Now, think about this, because there's been a lot of dialogue about Lamar Jackson, if he really deserves to win a possible second MVP. And I've been appreciating the conversation because what a lot of people do who are in favor of Lamar Jackson not Winning the MVP, they point at his numbers. And, hey, they have a legitimate argument because if you look at Lamar Jackson's numbers this season, they are not very sexy at all. They're not, not sexy. Like, he, he threw for 19 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, uh, 3,357 yards, uh, but he's rushed for 786 yards uh, and rushed for five touchdowns as well. And you got to take that into account. There's some people that try to leave the rushing stats out, but you cannot do that. But even still, like his numbers are not the sexiest numbers in the world. But the fact that Lamar Jackson is now the, the league favorite to win the MVP, that tells me a couple of things that I really, really appreciate. Um, the, the biggest thing is that people are realizing that it's not just about numbers and us as Ravens fans we've been seeing that and been talking about that with Lamar Jackson for years numbers they tell a lot they tell a whole lot but numbers with Lamar Jackson they never never not once in his career the stats they well besides wins but the stats they never told the full story when it came to Lamar Jackson and his impact on these Baltimore Ravens the biggest way and we talked about this this during the game against the 49ers the biggest way in my opinion that you can truly tell if somebody is the MVP of the league or just even just based off of that team alone how is that team when they're on the field when they're playing versus how is that team without them and with Lamar Jackson everybody knows everybody knows that with Lamar Jackson, Ravens always got a shot. They always got a shot no matter what team they go against, no matter what, it, no matter who's hurt, no matter what, it, they always got a shot. But when Lamar Jackson's not playing, things ain't so pretty. So I, I really appreciated this, the fact that people are having conversations about Lamar Jackson being a possible MVP, um, and, and they're realizing, like, it's not just about numbers. Numbers do play a big part now. They play a huge part, but they're not the end-all, be-all, and, and I really, really appreciate that. So we'll see how this thing shakes out. Now, this season, speaking of Lamar Jackson and these Baltimore Ravens, it's been some crazy stats that have come out this year in regards to the team. This is one of them. The Ravens have seven wins, 
by 14 points or more this season. So it's like, all right, we, we won uh, seven games by 14 points or more. That's, that's good enough already. But get this part. Look, look, listen to this. All of those opponents are currently above 500. So it ain't like the Ravens are just blowing out these bad teams, anything like that. No, 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 no. They're winning decisively against winning teams. That's real right there. And again, it listed Houston, Cleveland, Detroit, Seattle, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, San Francisco. And I said, no team, not one, no team in NFL history has had more than five regular season wins by 14 points or more against teams that finished the season with a winning record. So Ravens just, they are such a great team. This is why we continue to say they got to do it this year because this team is extremely special. Ryan Clark, he said something that meant a lot to me uh, the other day uh, because there was a 49ers fan. And, and it's, it's been crazy because Ravens, obviously, they got a lot of wins this year. They, they won 12 games. And, of course, when you beat a team, you, you, you hear from their fan base, you hear this, that, and the other. Some fan bases, they give a lot of respect to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson them. Other fan bases, they just they don't know how to. And, and I think it comes from a place of being spoiled. And it's not necessarily a good or bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing for the fan base because that means if they're spoiled, they've been winning a lot. Like I remember back in 2019 with Patriots fans. Oh, boy, it, it was the worst. Because Patriots fans, and they had Tom Brady too. Patriots fans, they were so used to winning every single year. We win so much, win all them Super Bowls and whatnot. So when the Ravens beat the Patriots with Tom Brady, beat them. And Lamar Jackson undefeated against Tom Brady, by the way. But anyway, he's 2-0. Uh, when, the, when Ravens beat Tom Brady and the Patriots, so many Patriots fans, they, they were just disrespectful. It was, it was ugly. It was really ugly. But I've been seeing a lot of the same thing with a lot of 49ers fans. A lot of 49ers fans have just been trying to discredit Lamar Jackson, been trying to discredit the Baltimore Ravens, uh, been trying to tear them down over this loss. And, yeah, this was a big game, and it was a big loss for them. Um, but they just – a lot of fans don't know how to move with respect. And there was a tweet that somebody put out. He said – it was a 49ers fan, by the way. He said, MVP race and odds are a joke. They are a joke. Games with zero touchdowns, rushing or passing in 2023. Lamar Jackson has three. Brock Purdy has one. And they said Purdy's odds plummeted last night while Jackson's skyrocketed. How can you win MVP if your team went two and one in three games you didn't score? So how can you win MVP? Again, this is why I appreciate the fact that Lamar Jackson is leading right now because it shows it's not all about the numbers. It's about impact. This is what Ryan Clark said. He said, probably... Because one guy has played without his most reliable and consistent target most of the year. Speaking about Mark Andrews, he lost a running back last week. Uh, speaking about Keaton Mitchell and beat the best team in the NFC without him. Speaking about the 49ers. And the other guy was 0-3 once one of his targets was sidelined. So speaking about like Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, when, when those guys went down, Brock Purdy has not won a game. And then he finished it off and he said, then Brock Purdy had a game like this uh, head to head yesterday. So, oof, Ryan Clark, shout out to Ryan Clark. I, I love Ryan Clark as an analyst. Didn't like him as a player very much because he, he shattered some of my Ravens. But anyway, um, and that's real right there. And you know what? Ryan Clark talked about the Ravens losing Mark Andrews, the Ravens losing Keaton Mitchell. But that's not even a half because from the very first game, the Ravens lost uh, they didn't even have Mark Andrews in the first game. They lost J.K. Dobbins for the year. They lost Marcus Williams for a chance. Like, we ain't got to go down the list, but y'all know Ravens, despite the Ravens being as healthy as they ever have been, they still have a long list of guys that are hurt and significant guys that are hurt, that are missing time, that have missed a lot of time, that won't be returning this year, and so one that may hopefully be returning later on this year, but we'll see how that goes. Now, Big game, huge game coming up against the Miami Dolphins this, this, this Sunday. I uh, thought I was going to get flexed, but it's okay. The game is at 1 p.m., so we'll all be there watching. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, they got something that's right there in front of them for the taking. And one thing that I've really, really appreciated about this Baltimore Ravens team this year as opposed to other years and previous years is that when everything lines up for the Baltimore Ravens in previous years, if, if stuff will line up like, oh, Ravens, all you got to do is take care of your business, and it's yours. Previous years, they will fall flat. Previous years, they will come up short. Previous years, they, it seemed like they just did not know how to handle when things were laid out right in front of them. But this year has been very different. This year, we've seen it so many times throughout the year, especially recently, when it's like, all right, Baltimore Ravens, this team lost, that team lost, that team won, that team won. Oh, that lines up perfectly for you. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to handle it? The Baltimore Ravens this year have stepped up. And, and showed out, and they have won. They have taken care of their own business. So now 
This, another opportunity presented right in front of them. Baltimore Ravens, all you got to do is win. You're the number one seed. You don't need anything else. You don't need no other help. You don't need nothing. All you got to do is win, and you're the number one seed, and it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Week 18 is cool, but week 18 won't even matter. You win against the Miami Dolphins, who's going to be a tough team. You win against them, and it's yours. It's yours. So, and obviously the AFC North will be theirs as well, but the Baltimore Ravens, it's exciting knowing that because, again, they have taken care of so much of their own business this year already that they can even be in this position to where all they got to do is win. They don't need help. They don't need that team to lose. They don't need that team to lose. They win, and you're number one. And, 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 and you still got another week of football left. That is a beautiful thing uh, in my eyes. Now, another stat. Again, we, we got a lot of stats to talk about in this video because there's a lot of things that the Ravens it just make you excited, man. Another stat. The Baltimore Ravens, and shout out to my guy Kevin Ostrich. I said the Baltimore Ravens have not trailed by more than seven points at any point during the 2023 NFL season. That is insane. They have not trailed by more than a touchdown this entire season. And you know what's crazy about that? Uh, and it's kind of sad about that. Well, nothing sad about that, but Shannon Sharp. And I know a lot of Ravens fans are big Shannon Sharp fans, especially recently too, right? But Shannon Sharp, he talked about how with the Baltimore Ravens winning, cause it, and we've heard this before, when goalposts, like when, when Ravens blow teams out, when Ravens winning like crazy, then people will try to change their stance. They'll try to change whatever their narrative is. Now it's like, oh, well, I, I, I want to see how the Ravens do playing from behind. I, I, I want to see how the Ravens passing is when they're, when they're losing a the game. And it's like, really? That's like, c come on now. Come on now. But anyway, that is a, a beautiful stat. Now, another stat. Um, and, and this was just a personal stat from Mr. Dan Ovlosky on one Lamar Jackson from that San Francisco 49ers game. Thus, highlighting why people feel like he is the MVP of the league, the most valuable player and the most valuable person on the Baltimore Ravens, but in the NFL. Says because he said he counted eight plays. <laughs> Coincidence, number eight, eight plays, right? He counted eight plays where Lamar Jackson made something out of nothing, a positive play out of a negative starting point. And he said those eight plays accounted for 143 yards of offense. So again, numbers don't always tell the whole story. They do tell a big part of it. But in order to really fully appreciate a Lamar Jackson, you have to fully watch a Lamar Jackson you cannot just look at a stat sheet I mean you can and appreciate him for sure but it goes deeper than that you got to watch the games you got to watch him play because you will not fully understand just how dynamic of a player Lamar Jackson is unless you actually watch and don't even just watch the highlights because highlights don't even show everything so it's that's very important now another interesting stat about the Baltimore Ravens flipping it to the defense they have 54 sacks and 26 takeaways that's a lot of sacks. And guess what? Both of those are first place in the NFL. Number one in the NFL. So leading the league in sacks, leading the league in takeaways, and that's a beautiful thing. That, that helps so much. Now, these stats were brought to you by Cole Jackson. Uh, pressures allowed against the 49ers by the Ravens offensive line. So how do they do with allowing pressure? Because sacks, if a sack happens, it, it don't tell the whole story. Uh, and, and sometimes there are even games where no sacks will happen and we'll feel like, oh, the offensive line did really good. But if you watch the game, you'll see there's a lot of pressure that gets through in the quarterback, especially with Lamar Jackson. He just evades it. But let's let's look at the pressures allowed in this game. Two pressures were allowed by Morgan Moses and Tyler Linderbaum. One pressure was allowed by Ben Cleveland, Kevin Zeidler, and John Simpson. So one each. So first for Morgan Moses and Tyler Linderbaum, two each. Uh, ben Cleveland, Kevin Zeidler, and John Simpson, one each. But zero. Zero pressures were allowed by Ronnie Stanley, Pat McCarry, and a bonus, Daniel Filele. So against a Joey Bosa, against a Chase Young, against a Hargrave, against, against all those boys, against 49ers defense. That'll, they, and they'll send blitzes sometimes too now. They allowed a total of two plus two is four, then plus three is seven. Seven pressures. I'll take that all day. I'll take that all day, especially against 49ers. I, I, I'll take that all day. Now, somebody who has not only been getting pressure for the Baltimore Ravens, but they've been getting sacks as well. And that's my guy, hashtag JC24, Mr. Jadavian Clowney. That, that was probably my favorite signing of this offseason, obviously, besides Lamar Jackson. But that's probably my favorite signing of this offseason. Love the Odell Beckham Jr. signing, too. It was right up there. But Jadavian Clowney was my favorite one. Baltimore Ravens signed him for 2.5 mil, and shout out to Zach Bollinger who, who highlighted this. He said, EDC gave Clowney 2.5 mil for this type of production, absolute steal of the season. So, 
He has eight and a half sacks right now. Eight and a half sacks, and he got a million pressures too. But see, with Jadavian Clowney, that eight and a half sacks is supposed to be a lot higher than that. It's supposed, the, the, his numbers are supposed to be a lot higher. His sack total is supposed to be a lot higher. He's missed so many sacks. He's been right there. So the fact that he has been right there, he's been getting a lot of pressure, and great pressure. He's been doing a phenomenal job. I, I really want to see him finish with double digit sex. I mean, this is good already, but I want to see him get even more. So, ha- shout out to my guy, hashtag JC24. Now, another stat that is crazy is crazy for Lamar Jackson again. Told y'all, there's a lot of exciting numbers and news with the Ravens. More, it, there's more. Lamar Jackson um, is undefeated. So, six and, he's either 6 0 or 7 0 against in his career versus top five scoring defenses. So, the, 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 the best of the best in the NFL when it comes to scoring defense on the road. So he is undefeated. He has never lost a game on the road against a top five scoring defense. That's crazy. And, and that, that, that does not make any type of sense. None of it. It doesn't. But again, thus showing you how special Lamar Jackson really is. Lamar Jackson now 20 and 1. A record of 20 wins and one loss versus the NFC. <laughs> He's crazy, man. And obviously, it's, it's not just Lamar Jackson. It's the, the whole Baltimore Ravens team, and, and it's a collective effort. Uh, but that is an amazing statistic, man. That is crazy. So uh, another thing, too, with, with Lamar Jackson, a lot of people have they talked about the numbers um, and how, oh, yeah, he only got this much passing touchdowns and da 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 Now, one thing, context is very important. Gus Edwards has 12 touchdowns this year. So shout out to Gus. Gus the bus. Live stream be calling him uh, the G-Wagon. We're going to talk about that nickname a little bit later. Anyway, um, he has 12 touchdowns this year, but all of them have been inside the 10-yard line. All 12 of Gus' touchdowns came right there on the goal line. Hey, hand it off to Gus. Run it up the gut. Gus, go do your thing, Gus. They've been right there. But that lets you know that Lamar Jackson and his Ravens offense, they've moved the ball downfield in order to put Gus in position to get these touchdowns. So that's something that needs to be highlighted to people too. It's important that that's recognized. He, he's your MVP. And then last but certainly not least, Kyle Hamilton. We love Kyle Hamilton. He, he is amazing. Kyle Hamilton is just great. His impact on the Baltimore Ravens has been phenomenal. Uh, but the NFL recognized that this week, and they said that Kyle Hamilton, he was named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week after his two-interception game against the San Francisco 49ers. So shout-out to Super Duper Kyle because he has been killing it. Killing it this year. Last year, I remember, it started off a little shaky for him early on in the season. But once he got it, he got it and it clicked. And I love, I love, 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 love the fact that I remember last year, the Baltimore Ravens just used him as a weapon. They had him in the slot. They had him do a little bit of safety. They had him, they had him do some pass rush outside linebacker. They had him everywhere. But they used him as a weapon last year. So then I remember this year, I was thinking, uh-oh, they traded Chuck Clark away to the Jets. Um, And now I would expect them to probably put Kyle Hamilton more of in a traditional safety role right there, strong safety. I'm sure you could probably do it, but I would much rather them leave him where he is. Don't try to fix what's not broken. Guess what the Baltimore Ravens did this year? They did not try to fix what wasn't broken. Mike McDonald, you are amazing. You are amazing. Todd Munkin, you've been doing a pretty good job too. Uh, And now we still got some little kinks to work out, but... The fact that the Baltimore Ravens, they can have an off game on offense and still put up 33. Still put up 33 with having an off game. Amazing. And we cannot, we cannot just give a shout out to Todd Munkin. We cannot just give a shout out to Mike McDonald without giving a shout out to John Harbaugh. So special shout out to Ravens head coach, John Harbaugh as well. 